Our next guest is here. We're here to talk about the economic outlook for 2024, uh, revenue collections, tax, public finance management, debt repayments, and avoiding default. Jimmy Wenjage, businessman, politician. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How Good are you morning doing? to all of you. Good it's good morning. to be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you been? How's well, the new year begun? Well, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you can I guess see. like all of us. Huh? <laughs> As you can see. <laughs> that says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that says a lot. <laughs> you look well, Jimmy. I'm well. Good. I uh, had a good uh, Christmas break. Mm. Didn't move from the city. You took a break? Yeah, I took a break. From what? From uh, just general life. And then you just Stress. chilled? Yes, yeah, just chilled with the family. Yeah. It's good to well. see you. Should do that more often. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah it, it feels, feels very good for you. you see? Yeah, it mm. feels very good. Good you, to see you. You are more positive in your outlook. Oh yes, <laughs> about life in general. Yes. yes. Oh yes. Very oh, yes. good. About Kenya, that we'll talk about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> First test of the day, Jimmy, is your understanding of Swahili. CT has the day's proverb. Uh huh. And this week, the proverbs are from the Republic of Kenya, the Great Republic of Kenya. Very good. 60th fastest growing economy in the world. <laughs> Are you trying to set the tone? Yeah, yes. 60 years old. 60 years You're old. Consistent. Yeah. 60, 60. Was it 60 years or 29th grow fastest? I think it was 29th. 29th growing. Even if it's 29th, you can say 6% six, six six GDP growth. growth. Yes, but I like the 60 because mm -hmm. it's being prophetic. Right. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. The proverb is in Swahili. Swahili. Yes. So, Jimmy, you first translate into English and then interpret it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nakuskia. Asante sana. <laughs> Adui angu kapo muinue. Again. Adui angu kapo muinue. The enemy falls. Lifting. Okay. Good translation. Now, tell us, what do you think it means? When you fall, CT are lifting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this man has just declared that he's enemy. <laughs> Jimmy, that declaration is that I'm your enemy. So <laughs> I'm pulling your leg this morning. Of course you are. Of course you are. You're my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn to laugh. Oh, no. oh that's rich. <laughs> <laughs> my best friend. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you think the Kenyans are saying? What's what's the deeper meaning of this problem? That um, when somebody is down, yeah. lift them, even if it's your enemy. Mm. Mm. Lift them. Why? Because we are called to a greater purpose than than being vengeful, mm. being unforgiving. So lift your enemy. Yes, show him forgiveness. Great. Mm. Great. Jimmy, the back page of the nation today. Yes. Treasury borrowing up by 168 billion on low tax netted. Um, the government is raising its borrowing target for the current financial year by 168 billion on projection of lower tax collection that has seen ordinary revenue forecast revised down by 210 billion shillings. Are you telling me that uh, the Treasury is admitting that um, the ambitious tax targets are off the mark? And that as we had predicted earlier, the Laffer curve set in. You raise taxes to an extent that you get diminishing revenue, declining revenue, because you have taxed everybody out of the market. Are we, are we, are we seeing that admission? Had we not talked about this all the way back in, I think, August? Oh, probably, or July probably their year. target was unrealistic, ab initio. Yes. You, 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 you cannot raise two billion shillings in one year, and then the next one you expect to raise three billion shillings miraculously, trillion. growing it by three trillion, just like that. So what you are saying, mm. I saw the president in his interview talk about over seventy percent of his revenue is going to debt. Mm. So what you are admitting, in fact, our figure now is about seventy-eight percent. What you are saying mm -hmm. is that this revenue is not forthcoming and that um, we are going to face the crisis we have been predicting over one year now, which is the crisis of default. If you recall when we had our first session here, Ghana had defaulted at 70%. 
and it had very similar circumstances to ours. Very similar. And we have the head of state admitting that that is where we are today. Over 70 percent. Sri Lanka collapsed towards 90 percent. Lebanon, 80 percent. Argentina, 80 percent. Zambia, 80 percent. We can keep going on. 80 percent of what? 80 percent of revenue going to debt. Mm -hmm. So we are at a situation where it is inevitable that our predictions of debt default are coming. And in fact, I think it is now common knowledge in the market for anybody who is dealing first and foremost with domestic bonds. This year, because it's interesting to see those figures in the nation, mm. this financial year, Parliament passed loans, foreign and external loans of 313 billion. But a month later, the National Treasury gazetted external loans of 870 billion mm. and domestic loans of 690 billion, bringing their total debt this financial year to almost 1.6 trillion. So I don't know whether they are trying to adjust themselves to slowly ease in some facts which are not quite true in relation to the budget. But what Treasury did and what the National Assembly did were two different things. So it's like we have two budgets. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see the domestic debt of 690, they have 374 billion shillings that is going towards redemptions. Those are rollovers of debt previously taken, maturities. Mm. Now, what I'm understanding, and I think this may have been uh, triggered um, by a lot of our discussions, mm. may have been triggered by the uh, amount of tax revenue going to debt, the questions of insolvency. Um, but one of the biggest triggers was in November, where Standard Chartered Bank said, 52% of our bonds we are liquidating even if it's at a loss of about 2 billion shillings. And it has continually done that. Mm. Other banks are following suit. So what is happening now is that this 374 billion in redemptions, people don't want to roll over. They want their cash. Mm. Bondholders, whether it's banks, insurance companies, pensions, individuals, want their cash. And that has precipitated a total drawdown on the overdraft facility at CBK because when government does not have cash to pay those redemptions, it takes an overdraft at CBK. And what's the limit at CBK? It is 5% of the previous year's audited accounts. So that is 91 billion. Today, it is at 95 billion. It is at 95. So they have no more leeway. And the redemptions are 370. Yes. Yeah. They have no more leeway. So I can tell you in the next month or two, as a maximum, you are going to have a crisis on domestic debt of untold proportions. What would that mean? And this is the thing. You know, we, we talk about some of these things, Jimmy. We say, oh, domestic debt, and it sounds really... Fiscally. Complicated. I mean, my goodness. So how does that play out? What do we see when we say we're going to have a crisis on domestic debt? It means a default. Meaning... How does the average Kenyan hmm. CT feel it? How, how do you feel it when you say that there's a crisis of domestic debt? Kenya has defaulted on its uh, uh, payment responsibility. What would that mean? What does that mean? Mm. Uh, a pain of untold proportion. And it starts this way. Mm. The first thing with a crisis of domestic debt is a bank crisis. You have an immediate banking crisis. The banks are threatened with the possibility of closure. Now, in countries like Lebanon, in countries like Argentina, banks closed. Lebanon closed from 2019 until earlier last year. Mm -hmm. So it means that you have no access to your revenue. 
of your money. You have no transactions you can do with local banks. That's a huge crisis. To save banks from closing, Ghana did what you call debt distress exchange. So they said, we are going to remove a certain amount of people's deposits, a certain amount of your bonds, of your debts, and pass it on to you and I, the sovereign. In Ghana, it was 30%. So if you had deposits in your bank of 10,000 shillings, you give it three. You, 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 three went. Mm. If you had foreign exchange, it was turned into shillings immediately, and 30% 30 was went. removed. Now in Ghana, it has gone to 35%. They increased another 5%. Now, it then creates what you call an inflation year in September. Yeah. How, how exactly does that help the government? You have reduced, essentially you've, you've plummeted the value of whatever it is that I have by 30%. That's not even a 30% no reduction, it's plummeting. It's plummeting, yes. Yes, so how does that help the government? You see, who is the sovereign? The people. So who is responsible for the debt? Right. So they come for you. Just like this government is coming for you for taxation. Just raising its tax because it has that debt to deal with. Hmm. It comes for you. It's very simple. So the government is merely trying to survive. Hmm. Merely trying yeah. to survive. And what happens mm -hmm. is that this is done with other, other um, creditors. Where they say... You have both domestic and foreign debt. Let us see what the sovereign is prepared to swallow with their local debt. Then we, as IMF, as so on and so forth, will look to see how we can assist you with your external debt, mm -hmm. which is them. All right? That's how it begins. Now, thereafter, I think it's important to understand, you have an inflation rate that goes to the extent because nobody wants your currency. Even you don't want to hold on to your Kenya, to your local yes, currency. Yes. So in Ghana, uh, the, 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 CD. the CD lost value to about 50%. Mm. <laughs> that was the f inflation rate. 50%. So you tell me Mwanainchi and cost of living. All right? Mm. That means cost of living. Whatever you can see today will go up 50% as a minimum. But that didn't stop there. You immediately had a foreign and exchange rate problem. It lost its value to the extent of almost 80%. We are sweating today here of an exchange rate that in one year has lost 28% of its value. You imagine anything above that. And tell me about cost of living. Mm -hmm. What do you think the cost of petrol will be? What will you ever be able to afford here? So you are talking about a major crisis. You then have what you call a mobile banking crisis. An electronic crisis. So your m -Pesa will be deducted. Anytime you transact, whether you deposit or you send, you'll find you have the same 30% deductions. Mm -hmm. All right? And it may stop for a while. Because unless it is negotiated well enough, yeah, there'll be no backing in order to support those transactions. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a major cash flow problem for each and every one of us in this country. Unfolding. Mm -hmm. Unfolding. Armageddon. Very, very, very soon. And that's the outlook for 20. This is very soon. Yes, very okay. soon. I'm, I, I, I mean, uh, a lot of the people I'm talking to mm. are predicting the next six months. I believe we'll see a crisis in the next three months. Jimmy. When you were here at the beginning, the first quarter of last year, I've been keeping quiet because what I'm hearing here today, I heard it quarter one last year. And you predicted that, you know what, in fact, by July, you guys, things will be so bad. It's a year later, Jimmy. It hasn't happened. Yes. Actually, it has. And now you're saying it's going to happen again in the uh, next three months. I, actually, it has. It has. Those things specifically have not happened, City. No. The magnitude that he speaks of, we have not experienced. But it's not just the clouds. 
we've actually had rainfall. You know how we say we're just seeing the impending rain and there are dark clouds. The rain drops, and these are big drops. They've actually started falling. So explain to me how they've happened. Let me tell you what I Has am seeing. Has there been a haircut yes. on your deposits? No, in no, the no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Let, me, let me tell you what I am seeing. Mm. Okay. Every time we have talked about cost of living and not being able to afford and why this conversation has refused to move away is because we keep being told our shilling has lost value plus the cost of what we need to live keeps going up. And then we also see the so-called value of the shilling sliding against the other currencies that are supposed to be major currencies in the planet. Mm. But the signs that cause me the greatest worry is with our external debt when i see the brenton woods institutions the people oh, there's always news about them coming in to help us coming in to do this now the sort of help we get is not the regular loan where somebody is going to borrow because it, it looks like we're not just limping we have a problem and somebody needs to seriously come in to assist us because without this we're going to tumble now okay. that is my interpretation now when that happens i feel mm. how bad are things really because, okay yes. Good. there is no let, let me compliment let me mm. compliment what ct has said mm -hmm. first and foremost i don't recall july i remember september yes it was september it was september my target was september after the first budget of this regime mm. and you can see i am not too wrong tell me if any county has been paid their dues in the new budget what do you mean by dues you know there's something called a first charge All right first charge items on the revenue are debt county and pensions since the new budget I want you to tell me how much money has gone to counties and it's a first charge before salaries of government. So government has defaulted on that expenditure. It has not remitted money to counties. On time. What do you mean on time? Find out how much has been remitted. Apart from salaries that have been going to counties, please tell me a lump sum percentage of the 385 billion mm. that is supposed to be paid in this financial year as revenue share to counties. The president himself said they are delayed with salaries. They are rolling over and they are paying salaries very late. Mm -hmm. Okay? They are very clearly having a huge increase in pending bills. They are defaulting on pending bills. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. The same government came out and said they are going to pay the euro bond. And they were going to pay part of it by December. Yes. Why have they not paid it? Mm. Because the people they expected to finance it. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine we are financing the principal? We don't have the cash. The people who are expecting to finance it are saying we want liability management. Liability management is debt distress. And they started saying it in November. October, November, and December. Who are these people? Trade Development Bank, for example. Standard Chartered Bank. All right? Mm -hmm. Those, they, all of them, they tried to group them up together. And they said, we want liability management, which is distress, debt distress exchange. So it is here with us. Okay. It is here with us. We, we, you, we may be wrong in terms of a month or two, but I can assure you, just like City has articulated, it is here with us. It is our clear and present danger. It mm -hmm. is what is affecting each and every one of our lives every single day, making life unbearable for us. Sure. I mean, I have a lot of a um, uh, number of questions, but one of them is that, you know, we see what's happening it's very clear you don't have to do much to figure out how much this pinch is at the moment and what you're saying is that it can get worse but interestingly not too long ago deputy president said you know we've done everything that we need to do to remove kenya from the brink of <laughs> falling over the edge right and then the president not too long after that then actually said you know what we have stopped we've put all the things in place to make sure that Kenya does not tip over 
towards the debt crisis. So as far as they're concerned, or it could be propaganda, but as far as they're concerned, everything that they needed to do to make sure that Kenya does not get to the place that you're talking about has already been done. It's like now the antibiotic has been administered and we're waiting for those few days where you're going to feel groggy and gross until the medicine starts to work. Okay, do are you telling me you believe them? I'm just telling you what they said. Okay, because I can, I can assure you of something. <laughs> that that is very similar language to that that was done by the Minister of Finance and the President of Ghana from May 2022 and they defaulted in December. Same language. In fact, when they were defaulting, they said it will not even harm the Ghanaian. Mm. Right? Mm. This is something the government can manage. That is similar language that you're talking about. Mm. But the reality, we are living it. The reality is the shilling is still losing value, as CT said. Mm. The reality is they are coming back and hitting us for more and more taxation. Now they even want to hit the farmer for every hundred shillings he earns. They want to take five shillings. They're hitting everybody more and more. Mm. And right now, the reality is that banks, large bondholders, small bondholders are saying, we do not want rollover. It is now too risky to hold on to government paper. debt and government paper, which tells you mm. the signs are there. The clouds are clear. It is about to rain. Mm. So, Jimmy, just looking back again, in last year, the signs that you said... Let's look out for these signs. And you're comparing with what has happened elsewhere. This is lived experience by the people of Ghana. We even hosted a member of parliament from Ghana who came and gave us actual practical experience that he himself had gone through. And some of those things were a situation where the government would talk and talk as if well, things are okay and <laughs> until they reach the end of the tether. Correct. And the next thing that they had to do was to now do the things that you've said. Uh, look at, okay, as a sovereign, the kind of money that I owe you, first of all, I'm rolling over the debt. Number two, I'm looking at uh, the amount of savings that you have. I need to, you know, shave off some of that money and to look at into raiding people's pockets. And he said, this is what's going to happen before the end of 2023. Why do you think it did not happen before the end of 2023? Well, with everything, you have a plus or, marg uh, mm. plus or minus uh, area margin. Um, but principally, the government just has defaulted on all its other commitments. I give you the example of counties. They have put out an image that IMF and World Bank are saving them. And uh, these are false images because we know the reality of drawing down on that debt. Let me be very clear. Mm -hmm. I have been very clear about what you call odious debt. We have a very unique position. And I said, if this government continues to pay debt that is not legal, mm. we are going to default. And they continue to do so. And that default is of their own making. Today, I will not blame the previous regime. Mm. I will blame this regime. It is of their own making. They have chosen this path of self-destruction. Mm -hmm. And that destruction means we are also going to get destroyed. But I want to tell them this, because this reality is coming. And this pain that is going to come to us, we are not going to accept or believe that they are the ones who are now going to be capable of taking us out of it. Mm. We will not. Ghana is probably the only country where head of state has survived in power out of default. And he survived only because he has two years, he has elections this year. He pleaded to try and exit with some honor. But every other country, they are removed. Even here, that is coming. And I say it is their conscious decision, a decision they have made themselves, that we will pay this odious debt mm. and will continue sinking Kenya. You've said something, and if you just make a linkage, and Kenya could default or headed down the road of default. And the reason, the reason for this is because Kenya is paying illegal debts. Correct. Okay. Now, it seems as though you've been saying these things over and over again. Over the weekend, um, 
see us for lands, Alice Wahome, um, said a number of things. I don't know, were you in Nyeri when she was, were you there? In no, the, in I the, was with her in uh, Kiambu, in right. uh, Kino, Kiambu. Kikikui constituency, on Friday. Okay, on Friday. Mm. And then she said, uh, Jimmy Wajigi, keep doing what you're doing. Yes. You know, we, we hear you. Continue yes. doing what you're doing. It sounded as though, you know, you can be in your corner saying what you need to say, but we're going to continue doing it because you're keeping, keeping people righteous. But what you're saying is beyond just holding a bullhorn in a crowd somewhere and hoping somebody pays attention. But we're talking about serious stuff here that Very. could essentially sink this nation. So it's not a matter of keep doing what you're doing and somebody patting you on the back and saying, okay, keep people righteous, but saying you actually look at what you've been doing stop what you're doing otherwise kenya is going to the dogs L let me let me let me assure you of something here and i'm um, really i i don't see in all essence how we are such a unique country that every country that has reached this stage where you have all your revenue literally almost all your revenue going to pay debt has had to default, but Kenya is so special. Somehow we are so, so special, we are going to avoid it. Right? And that default is extremely painful. Mm. Now, we have sung this for over one year, that this is the danger ahead. And it's because you are paying this debt. They have refused to listen. So they are consciously taking us to that situation of collapse. They are, in fact, with a lot of zeal, making sure that they come and cause us even more pain by taking more and more of our money in taxation, frustrating every business you can think of, every producer you can think of, right? To pay this odious debt, this illegal debt, mm. and it's still collapsing us. They are making that conscious decision. Mm. Now, I want to tell you something. We will give them no time because we are getting there. I can tell you here, we will give them no time to imagine that we believe they can get us out of it. So what will you do? Oh, no, no government, I'm telling you here, other than Ghana the other day, mm. stays in power. And you will tell, you remember this. You know, these are extraordinary circumstances, city. Extraordinary circumstances in this country. We have never been here before. No, we haven't. And I can tell you, this government has refused to rise up, as, it, as Ndu is saying, is it to these extraordinary times is it capable? and make difficult decisions. Is it capable? No, it is not. It what is not. What would happen if we refuse to pay the odious debt? What immediately happens? And I was suggesting this to somebody I was with from government a few days ago. What immediately happens is the following is that you say we can afford to pay what is not odious. That one put it aside, we are going to pay it. But we need to audit it. Because as I also have said from before, we are clearly, in my view, have overpaid this debt. So we need to have checks and balances on this, our figures. So we need to say what is legitimate, pass through our parliament, is in our budget, we shall pay. What is odious, we put aside and investigate its payments and declare it odious. Now, what will happen is that you have a crisis, but for a much shorter period. With a decisive leadership, within a matter of no more than six months, this matter will be sorted out for most Kenyans. But we don't have a decisive leadership. We have a leadership that is frightened to make this decision. We have a leadership that is captured by interests of this odious debt. We have a leadership that has refused to rise up to the occasion of these extraordinary circumstances. Let me ask another question, Jimmy. What percentage of our debts is comprised of the odious debt? In our view? Yes. 70%. Hey. Oh, Jimmy. Yes. Seven trillion shillings. 70%, yes. Uh, let me, let me, let me update you. Let me update you. Uh. When we started screaming about debt, it was, nine it was at 8.4. Mm -hmm. July 2022. Today, January, 
it is at 11 trillion. Even after paying 1.9 trillion, 1.3 up to up to up to 1.3, 1.4 up to July, mm. August, and another 500 between then and now. So we paid about two trillion, and it is now at 11. A lot of that is because of loss of exchange. Mm. All right, I think you have a trillion something because mm. of loss of exchange, mm. and that is not going to change. No, but you can see exactly the trajectory. Mm. The trajectory keeps mm. going like this, and yet we are still being taxed, and yet it is chewing more and more of our revenue so as a percentage of 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 of, of, of its return. Your estimation is that seventy percent of that eleven trillion yes. is odious debt. Remember, odious debt is debt that is taken without the authority of the sovereign. Yes, the people. And the I'm trying to combine it with going interest to the and very many the people. Things. I think I think you. When I was last year, mm. I gave a very clear figure of what is deficit, which is debt. I told you we had done the accounts of the country. So you take our revenue, how much revenue? had we collected tax revenue actuals over the last 10 years, it was 13.3 trillion. What was our expenditure? Our expenditure, we categorized this way over the last 10 years. This is up to June 2023. We categorized this way. Mm -hmm. Development was 6 trillion. What was the county expenditure mm -hmm. over 10 years? What were the salaries over 10 years? What were the operations? What were the pensions over 10 years? We removed debt payments. And that came to 14.6 trillion. So our deficit was about 1.2, 1.3 trillion over 10 years. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much we borrowed? 7.7 .7 trillion. For what? 6.5 trillion above what was required, which is like 60 years worth of debt in advance that we pay today. It was not needed. That is the odious debt. What was it needed for? What did it fund? Mm. It didn't fund any shortfall mm -hmm. that we had. So what was it? Now, there's no way we can pay it. There's no way we can ever, ever pay it. But the journey, the journey for refusal to pay this debt that has been incurred to by the government to whoever has lent us the money has to start somewhere. Yes. Has to start by looking at first, is it, was it legally acquired? Correct. Through legal instruments. Correct. So were there legal instruments no. that were breached no. in the acquisition oh, of this Absolutely. Debt? There were legal instruments that were continually breached. Which? It was not, it was not in the budget. It was never passed by parliament. It was never in the appropriations bill, which is the budget. It never went as a line item to be expended for any project in this country because you can only borrow for development in the short term you can borrow from the overdraft and bills which are one year yeah. full stop mm -hmm. right so these bonds for example that the banks have given the government what project did they fund because they are medium term to long term what have they funded nothing they don't exist what did the euro bond fund show me where it is a line item in the budget we came here and we explained to you and showed you yep. what SDR was about. Mm. So the instruments that okay. we use so, so, to ascertain all these things, Jimmy, number mm. one would be the budget making process. And yes. this is the parliament. Law. The law. Okay. The law. If it has not gone through parliament, then it has, uh, this is an expenditure that has been made without the authority of the sovereign. Correct. Through their representatives Correct. in parliament. Correct. Then number two, lack of tracking that this has gone to the benefit of the people would be the Auditor General's reports. Correct. That would highlight that I do not see what it was expended this, for. Where this money has gone to. Correct. Do we have those corresponding uh, reports from the Auditor General that actually show there's a six trillion shillings here that has not gone to be expended in accordance with the law. I can that then can you. be used to say this is odious debt. Or uh, do we just uh, use our own uh, calculations? No, I can assure you, these were the records that we have looked at. Who's and records? all we removed, audit, uh, the budget, the treasury records and the auditor general. All we have removed is debt payments. Remove all the debt payments. That's all. And that is the figure. And what we have done is something very unique. It's called a forensic audit. 
A forensic audit is not just a sabu. Mm. It, is, it, 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 it is to look at the law and where it has been flouted. You look at every expenditure in relation to the law. The constitution. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Because we've done it also with the housing, housing levy, which is a very current debate. Mm -hmm. Right? You tell me where parliament has approved the housing levy, Article 2, to zero, two to one of the constitution, which says expenditure and revenue estimates. Show me the revenue or expenditure estimates of the housing levy. It doesn't exist. Show me in the appropriations bill where the housing levy is there. It doesn't exist. Show me in the Ministry of Housing where there's a line item called low-cost housing development. It doesn't exist. Does not exist. The only place housing levy exists is in the finance is bill. In, is in the collection. As a levy in the collection. But to be spent on what? Estimated on what? There's not even an estimate. In the revenue estimate, they should have done, oh, we expect to collect so much. Like now fuel levy, mm -hmm. it is there. Mm -hmm. It does not exist. So this government is perpetuating the things of the past. Are you telling me that it is legal? It is not. A judge called Majanja even gets writes and says, okay, they didn't put the revenue estimates, but it's in the appropriation bill and even quotes the appropriation bill. Where? Which appropriation? The one he's quoted, it doesn't exist. It does not exist. What do you mean? It is not there. <laughs> and it, so what you're the saying, one he quoted is not there. Let's look so we the, are saying, what is this fraud? So let's, let's look at From the, parliament yeah. to the executive to the judges. What is this fraud? Jimmy, let's look at the other side of it because we're saying that it does not exist because it is not there. Now, we're not looking at a vacuum or an empty black hole, right? We are looking at a system whereby anything that is going to be borrowed, spent, will then actually show up. It's called public finance management. Exactly. But where does it show up? So we're How is the control of budget, mm. for example, removing that money for housing finance? Sure. So we're saying that mm. if it then were a, a part of this appropriations public finance if it was there and if it was due if, if it followed the due diligence that it would actually then be there yes. for everybody to see yes so because it is not there cannot yes. be found according yes. to what you're saying yes then there's something hodgy podgy going correct on. so nine billion has been collected on housing o o o how has it been spent because they say it has been spent how has it been spent has it there's no item there's no line item has it been spent? That's, that's what they say. They say there's buildings going on. There are workers on the ground. It has been spent. How has it been spent? This is the impunity and the illegalities which we are talking about. They are still being perpetuated. Still being perpetuated. And it is illegal. Okay? Now, why should we as Kenyans support anything that is illegal? In Malaysia... When this was brought out with the one MDG, which was $3.9 billion, they went to London, court, and they said, I'm sorry, this thing is fake. It was refunded by Goldman Sachs in full. The tuna bond, same thing. They had their own courts in, in Mozambique. Mozambique, and they sorted it out. Here, we are going to court to get clarity, and we are being called saboteurs. People are being called saboteurs. And judges are being called, I don't know what names. The law is not being followed in this country. It is becoming a huge fraud. And has become a huge fraud. What a government is doing, and I say government because I want to include parliament in this too, is illeg illegalities that are costing and collapsing the economy of this country. Untold proportions. Untold proportions. Okay, Jimmy, back to my question. When we declare odious debt, right? An odious debt cannot just be declared because somebody is holding the sword and is the president in state house or any other office for that matter. There has to be something that supports it that then goes and says, we are not going to, we are going to breach this contract that we entered into as the government of Kenya and you who lent us this money because of these other conditions right yes now that's what i was saying for us to get to that level we have to establish that indeed this is odious is odious yes it was illegally procured yes that means 
parliament was not involved the people of kenya were not involved yes and number two even after it was procured it was misappropriated it did not go to any project that can be quoted and said this is where the money went to it did not benefit the sovereign right yes and you're saying as a government the one thing that you expected the government to do was to declare this odious debt and say because of this we cannot track it we cannot pay it let's have a conversation with you we don't know this debt yes absolutely how would you get there if you were the president how oh. would you get to that point i, I can what tell would you. you what would you use yes as your evidence yes that can stand before international law to say we the people of kenya are not going to pay you the money that you're claiming we owe you i uh in the run-up to uh, running for president last year um did a forensic audit i bothered to do some homework and i believe i did the first forensic audit of our national debt and we did it thoroughly i went on tv i bought advertising space to ring the bell on the danger up to date no government official has called me to ask me where is that forensic audit we look at it and it's the first ever it's not like the audit of the auditor general this is a forensic audit by a forensic auditor qualified so we have got the evidence that it is fake i came here and i explained to you very simple figures of a project called sgr okay mm -hmm. let me stop you there because you've started answering my question but then you you digressing a bit had you gone through into the presidential election had you been elected as the president of kenya with your forensic audit booklets yes the huge voluminous books that yes. you have all right <laughs> what would you have done next oh so yes you have these audit you oh, have the, you have the oh audit. i would have made what i would, would have, made, have i would have made the very clear decision take me technically yes what would you have done i would have very clearly said this audience debt put it aside we're not paying it we're not paying it yeah but jimmy it, it can't right? just be because and all those who believe some... all those who believe that it is it is payable come here and tell us which law you followed right hmm. because it's called buyer beware which law did you follow to give kenya this money show us what it has funded essentially tell us why it is kenya owes this money and why they should pay yes. for it mm -hmm. but let me ask this question and i can me. assure you something ct mm. if you get into what has really happened between treasury and central bank mm. you'll find that it funded nothing it has just been something called a ponzi scheme mm. <laughs> I want to ask this question. So what would you have done? So I still have I, I clearly would not pay it. No, no. Erika, you asking what process? Yes, I what process? Know the process. I mean, what would I mean, you do? You can't just wake up one day because I'm pr the president I said, "Oh, by the way, Kenya is not going to pay any more debt." Uh, because process. I mean, I don't see how you uh, no, no. And if you if is you think if you think I owe you come. You know, there is sure. what is called a threshold for ODS debt. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I would say that the forensic audit we have done which we would like adopted by the different government agencies mm -hmm. that is something you give auditor general mm. to say even commission your own forensic auditor because it's not a forensic audit. she's not a forensic auditor mm -hmm. right and say please let us make sure it concurs you've had the cob on this show said we don't even know what this debt is anymore mm -hmm. we don't even have a debt register it's a us inside there mm. you tell people go inside because now you have the power to tell people to go inside and verify the forensic audit we have done mm. once it is verified because it will take a very short time these are numbers that are open for everybody mm -hmm. once it is verified i can assure you of something we would not pay the odious debt and it would bring our tax to revenue targets in terms of how much tax mm. we are taking to pay debt to no more than about 30% Yes, and that would free kenyans mm. free kenyans we would reduce this taxation okay and institute what is called supply side growth where government is not the driver of everything right it's the private quarters. sector will then have access to a lot of credit cheap credit to do things and i'll and, I, and, I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll let's, just before, let's do the news first okay and then stay on this is the situation room the only way to start your day